Hello, just have a lot of equipment here and I want to talk about it and make sure you know what it's used for. Um, know that there are things available to you in the lab in case you ever need it. Um, so I'm just, just going to pick some stuff. Um, we've got some well plates. So these, um, right, they have wells. You might have a 24 well plate. You might have a 12 well plate. You might have a 96 well plate you know, with, with really, really small wells. Okay. Uh, you, you would do really small experiments. If you want to do many, many different um, kind of iteration, you, you, many different combinations of chemicals, you, you'd use one of these. And you can kind of see it You're using, um, using a really small amount of each chemical. And so that's kind of saving, saving on materials. Um, let's see. Let's go to, how about this guy? So this is, this is a ring stand. And we have a ring uh, right here. And if you're, if you're maybe setting up a Bunsen burner. So we, we say Bunsen burner all the time. And Bunsen burner is really a, a, specific, uh, a specific design uh, by Bunsen. But in general, you call them Bunsen burners. Uh, you could also call them gas burners. So I have three different types in my room. There's, there's more than that. Um, but like there's this there's this design um, where you have this here's your here's your gas valve and you can open this you know like it's a screw so lefty loosey righty tighty um, all right so that's that lets the gas in I recommend when you start this you should have you should tighten it all the way right so that you can check for any leaks I'll get into Bunsen burners later here is an air inlet okay and this just wrote, goes back and forth and maybe you can see that right where you got the opening. Uh, when you use a Bunsen burner or a gas burner, you want to have these closed at first, right? So close, close, and and that'll that'll make sure that the flame doesn't keep blowing out. A lot of times, people keep it open, and since it's since the gas is rushing through there and the air pulls it up, it actually blows out the flame pretty quickly. All right, so this is one design you might see, and another design. It looks very very similar, except it doesn't have. Um, a control for the amount of gas that's coming in, right? Uh, so these these look very similar, whereas when you screw this tight, the gas stops flowing in, into the gas burner. This one doesn't have that, so any adjustments you were making for gas would need to be done at the lab bench, but still has the air inlet. Um, this one, this is another design, and for this one, the the gas valve is on the bottom, and so the the it's kind of reversed, right? It's, it's, it's still righty-tighty, but it's from the bottom. So you turn it, you tighten it, um, and it, its air inlet is a little bit different. So by the way, if you're using one of these, um, this part's going to get very hot, but usually this doesn't unless, you're, unless you are heating it for a really long period of time. However, just in case, you just will always want to check to make sure that it's, it's not hot. Um, but you can see that it's, it's opening up. You see those air inlets. All right, so these are, these are some different Bunsen burner designs or gas burner designs. Let's say you had it. These. All right, you have it set up. You have, some, you, you have a ring stand set up, and what might you do with this? Uh, well, you'd use a, it's called a clay triangle. So you can see it is a triangle, and we've got pieces of ceramic here. You want to put this on top, okay? You don't want to put something directly on the metal because the metal heats up and cools down at different rates compared to something like something like ceramic. So you want you want to put the ceramic on ceramic, uh, but you're not going to be able to. You can set the clay the clay triangle up, no problem. Uh, but when you're dealing with hot things, you need something to grab it. So that there's there's a couple different types of tongs that are in the room. This is a pair of crucible tongs. This are, these are beaker tongs. You do not use these if you're using a Bunsen burner. You can see there's a, this coating. You just see it as a blue coating. It's um, plastic or kind of rubbery. Uh, this is to help grip a hot beaker, right? So if we had a, hot, a beaker on a hot plate, right, you can grip it and move it around. Um, this is not to touch something that is above that, above the boiling point of water, right? You, you will melt it, and you can actually see it's been melted just a little bit. Okay. All right, so that's, these are beaker tongs. These are crucible tongs. So this 
this is not a crucible. Uh, we've got this little little spout. We could, we could pour off some liquid. This is called an evaporating dish. Okay, so evaporating dish. You can pick it. I, I would move this. Should move it. Uh, so we have we have an evaporating dish on there, and we might be heating something, right? We we will heat it, and we'll drive off the water. Sometimes we're heating something, and it's it's kind of splashing, and we want to be care careful not to do that. If uh, if we want to avoid splashing, we could use something like a watch glass. Um, watch glass. We could put right, we could put a watch glass on a beaker, and we have that spout where uh, water can evaporate. You know, th uh, gases can come out. Right, or maybe here. Um, this one make, makes me a little nervous to look at this, um, and I don't see it very often. I'm just pointing out that if you have something in a in a an evaporating dish that is tending to splash, you want to you want to cover it. You want to. Um, so I'd rather have a piece of ceramic here, but this might work. It depends what depends what you're doing. Um, but definitely, if you're heating heating a solution on a hot plate, um, that looks that looks great. Um, all right, so that's an, this is an evaporating dish. Uh, this put this down. Notice tips down when you use these. Right? I have a big evaporating dish. Right? For this one, maybe I want a bigger clay triangle, but this seems to be okay. This is a hundred milliliter evaporating dish. And now I have a crucible. So this this is actually a crucible, a uh, fifty milliliter crucible. And look at this. Yes, I have. I have some some lids, right? Crucibles are, are if you want to get something really, really, really hot. Uh, and so I have I have three different three different crucible lids here. Uh, let's see, let's see if I pick the right. All right, that doesn't look great to me. I'd, I'd rather have I'd rather have this sit in a little better. Um, so this you would want to use a bigger clay triangle or just use a smaller crucible. Want one or the other? Maybe, maybe actually with this clay triangle, uh, it's metal, and so I, I can I can unravel a little bit and get it a little bit more open. Uh, but if you want to get something really really hot, you would put it in a crucible and you put the lid on, and that that is as hot as you're going to get something in a laboratory, right? You get a, a good strong flame going, and you will it'll get hot. All right, so that's a crucible with a lid. Tips down. All right, so that's that. Anything? That's the Bunsen burner. So if, if you were if you were using that, also here is here is some wire gauze with ceramic. A lot of times at the table you've got some hot things, and you want a place to des put. You want a place that's designated for hot things. So what you would do is put this in the middle of the table, and anytime you take something off the Bunsen burner, you just put it there. And since, since that's the hot area, people don't need to wonder, right? And that, what this does is it helps prevent injury, helps prevent people from picking up something that is hot. Um, okay. All right, so I'll get rid of this stuff. There's also wire gauze without ceramic. Never reach. I, I, I knew my I knew the burette was there, but I didn't reach for it. I went around and grabbed it. Um, all right, so we have a burette clamp. And a burette. Okay. Um, so if it is vertical, if the valve at the bottom is vertical like this, that means it's open. So you, you would want to close this. And then we can fill this with water. Uh, you can't see, you can't see anything. So um, you know how are we how are we going to fill this? Is really high up. Not everybody, not everybody's tall. Not everybody can reach everything. What you do is you take the burette clamp and you you adjust it so that the burette can actually go below the level of the lab table. So you can see, even though I'm sitting down, you don't sit during lab, but even though I'm sitting down, I can I can reach it now, and I can fill this up. So, all 
All right, so I don't, I don't have a funnel handy. I usually, I, I like to use a funnel. You want to be careful. Sometimes you get in a lab and you've got this huge funnel up here, uh, but your burette, this burette only holds 50 milliliters plus a little bit at the top, plus a little bit at the bottom. I don't know, maybe 62, 63. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some liquid into this burette. I'm going to get glass to glass contact and just pour. Glass to glass contact, that way that little drip at the end goes into the burette and not onto the table. All right, that's enough. All right, so fill the burette. After you fill it, don't leave it at the bottom. I, I see people doing their experiment down here. Don't do that, please. Um, you know, lift up the burette and now get this at eye level. Right? If you're going to read a burette, the great thing about a burette is that it, you give very precise measurements. Um, so if you're going to read it, you want to be at eye level. Um, and then you just let some out, let some out. You'll notice that the burette starts at zero and ends at 50. So if you actually filled it all the way to zero, the number that you see is how much you've added. So that's kind of handy, but it does throw some kids off at first. All right, so that's, that's a burette. Um, one thing to point out about a burette, hopefully you're, it's gonna zoom, I think it's gonna zoom. So if you see there, the, you should see some um, numbers, and those numbers are whole, whole numbers of milliliters. And then you see that there are 10 lines in between there. So we have, we have lines for the 10th of a milliliter. And so you should be reading between those lines and estimating uh, about to the 100th of a milliliter. So these are very, very precise. Um, whereas here's a graduated cylinder. Whereas for a graduated cylinder, uh, you're, you're going to have, and so you can see that, 